Artificial Urinary Sphincter ZSI-375 Sphincter Operation How to Urinate The sphincter is implanted in the patient. With one hand, hold the pump unit in the scrotum, with the bulb forward. With the index finger of the other hand, press and release the bulb once. Press a second time if needed. The cuff deflates, releasing the pressure around the urethra. You can urinate. The cuff needs two to three minutes to automatically reinflate and to squeeze the urethra again. Sphincter operation, how to urinate. The sphincter is implanted in the patient. To urinate, press and release the pump button through the scrotum. Press and release only one time. When you release, the urethra opens and begins to urinate. In two minutes, the cuff reinflates automatically. In two minutes, the spring returns to its initial position. Urethra closed. The patient returns to be continent again. Artificial Urinary Sphincter ZSI-375 Surgical Procedure Standard Operating Room Materials A large Meyer clamp, a size 16 Foley catheter, sterile normal saline solution, and containers. Prepare and drape for a perineal and inguinal incision. A size 16 Foley catheter is placed in the urethra for guidance. Perform a perineal incision. The Foley catheter helps to identify the urethra during dissection. Dissect the fat and the bulbospongous muscle covering the urethra. Dissect 2 cm of urethra. Pull the urethra and perform a passage between the corpus spongius and the cavernous corpus. Handle the scissors with care. Perform an inguinal incision. It is easier to find the subdartus space from an inguinal incision than a scrotal incision. Prepare a large pouch for the pump unit with the scissors and the Meyer clamp. The subdartus pouch is a space used for orchidopexy. You can enlarge the pouch with the finger. Perform the passage between the perineal incision to the inguinal incision. Stay parallel to the urethra. The passage is behind the spermatic cord of the testes. Help the fingers to pass through the tissue with the aid of gauze pad. Perform the passage with two fingers. Control the passages. The subdardos pouch which should receive the pump unit is between two layers, the dardos and the cremaster muscle.
pull the collar tape through the loop. The pillow of the cuff must be in contact with the urethra. The device should never be in contact with the skin. Protect it with a gauze pad when possible. The collar tape is sutured to the shoulder of the loop with a non-absorbable suture. Direct the needle away from the pillow to avoid accidental perforation of the cuff. Control the issued pressure. Remove the size 16 Foley catheter to control the pressure in the hydraulic circuit. Press the activation button to activate the ZSI-375 for pressure control. Wait for the balance 120 seconds until the spring arrives to the midline. The spring moves from the minus sign to the midline position in two minutes. If the spring is not at or just below the midline, please watch the troubleshooting at the end of this video. After controlling that the spring is in midline position or just below, you can empty the cuff and deactivate the ZSI-375 by firmly compressing the deactivation button. Install a size 12 Foley catheter for 24 hours. Perform the pump unit passage between the perineal incision and the inguinal incision. Then place the pump unit in the subdartos pouch. Suture the wings of the butterfly to the internal scrotal tissue to avoid rotation of the pump unit. Turn the septum sideway to the urethra. Control that the cuff pillow is properly installed. Perform a local and intravenous flush of antibiotics. Antibiotics are usually administered during the procedure. Close the inguinal and the perineal incisions to complete the procedure. The patient will be easily able to locate the sphincter pump in the scrotum. Keep the size 12 Foley catheter for 24 hours. Troubleshooting. Case 1. If the spring is over-released, place the spring at or just below the midline. Wash the septum with saline solution to remove blood. Place the Huber needle in the furrow of the cuff and pierce the septum of the cuff. Gently inject some saline solution until the spring moves to the midline position. Case 2. If the spring is overstressed, place the spring at or just below the midline. Wash the septum with saline solution to remove blood. Place the Huber needle in the furrow of the cuff to pierce the septum of the cuff. Gently remove some saline solution until the spring moves to the midline position.